Hey everyone, welcome back to the Aero Media Pros channel. This is the second video in our series about the Phantom 4 RTK setup. And this is really a uh, video version of the quick start guide that you'll get with the Phantom 4 RTK. So we'll be walking through the different steps and uh, hoping to cover everything here. Um, the first part of the process is charging the batteries. So make sure that uh, before you leave to go out in the field that everything is fully charged. The way that you know that, we'll pull one of these here. If you press the button, on each of these batteries just one time, all the LEDs will light up, all four of them. And that's when you know that's 100%. If it's anything less than that, make sure that you go back to the charger and plug it in, make sure you got everything charged before you head out to the field. And this is gonna be the battery that we're plugging into the mobile base station. So before we set up the drone, let's go ahead and uh, set the mobile base station up and then we'll get everything connected to the drone. So first we have the, the tripod here, which you can extend the legs using the, the yellow tabs, but so make sure you got, can see everything in this video. We're gonna keep it lower here. And then you have a uh, leveler on top, so make sure that that's nice and level with the ground. Here's the uh, DRTK2. And this actually comes in two pieces, so out of the box you'll have to connect it with the screw here, but we've already done that here, so we'll go ahead and slide it in. Bring it as far down as we can. Like I said, typically on a, on a job site you're gonna have this uh, nice and high, but for the purposes of this video, just so you can see what's going on, we wanna make sure that we can see everything here. I'm gonna turn this to put the, uh, the power button on top towards me, and then that means that the battery compartment on this side is, is away. Let's grab our battery. Again, you can just double check and make sure the power's 100%. This is the battery compartment cover. You're gonna slide that down and then pull out this way. And then this is just gonna slide into that compartment with the, the leads on the left-hand side. So we'll slide this in. You'll hear it connect, but it's not gonna actually make a, uh, it won't snap into place or anything like that. It just slides in, take the cover, and then just slide it back up again. And so now it's, it's all powered. You can exchange that battery as well. So you can get multiple um, WB37 batteries to fit into that because they're the same battery that we use with the remote controller as well. So we'll set that up in a second. But for now, got everything secure there. Just check the levels again, because once you power this on, you wanna make sure that nothing is uh, moving, even until the end of the, the mission with the drone, make sure that this is staying in the same exact place. Another thing to note is you wanna make sure that you are in a wide open space with at least uh, 15 degrees of clearance, um, so you have a nice open sky for this to be able to get a more accurate reading. In this case, um, we're in a pretty, pretty fairly open space, um, but even, that even includes things like uh, trees and structures. You want to make sure that it has a nice large view of the satellites and could connect to them easily. In order to power it on, you'll see you have three buttons here. Um, the, three, the one on the left is going to be your link button, so that's what we're going to use to connect to the drone. Um, the middle is going to be the power button, so let's go ahead and just click on that first. And you'll see everything start to power up here. You'll actually make a, a the, you'll hear a fan running, so make sure that it's all powered up. And as it goes through its startup sequence, you'll notice a series of different LED colored lights. So we have the link on the left is likely gonna be red because it's not connected to the Phantom RDK yet. The power button is still in its startup sequence and that's gonna be showing you, the, the LED underneath that is gonna be showing you the status of its connection to satellites. So that has the ability to go red, yellow, and green depending on how close it is um, to locking its satellite position. So you'll actually see that go from red to yellow, and then now it's already green. Um, we're in a, in a space where it gets that uh, position very quickly. Now we'll talk about the mode button on the right-hand side. It's gonna control how it's connected to the system or what it's connected to. In this case, we're working with the Phantom, and uh, there's other ways in which this base station can be used, but for the purposes of this video, we're gonna stay in mode one. If you're just watching the, the green light flashing on the right, that is going to be your identifier for which mode that it's in. So right now it's just flashing once every few seconds and that's gonna be mode one. If you were to press the M button just once, 
that flash will be now two green flashes, and that's mode two. So same thing, mode three. Um, so we'll go ahead and press it two more times to get it back into mode one. All right, so for using the RTK with the mobile base station, what you're looking for is obviously we're gonna get the, the link to set up, so it's gonna be all green lights across the board. So we have the link green, the power is green, which means it's connected to satellites, and the mode is blinking once every few seconds to identify that it's in mode one. So right now we have the power is green, the mode is in mode one, but the red light on the left signifies it's still not linked. So let's go ahead and set up the uh, RTK unit, starting with the remote controller. All right, first step, just take the remote out of the case. And on the back of the remote controller, you'll see a tab on the bottom. You'll pull that down, and that'll open up the battery compartment. What's really great about the Phantom 4 RTK, different than any other Phantom in the past, is we have a interchangeable battery system. So this will last you all day on the job because you can just switch out the batteries. So I'll take WB37, just go ahead and put it on the bottom here, press down and slide up, and you'll hear it actually click and lock in place. You can replace the cover, and then we'll pull up the screen here. Nice high brightness crystal sky screen that comes with um, all of the RTK units and then you'll adjust the antennas. So bring these about to about a 45 degree angle so that when you're holding them, they're faced straight up in the air. To turn everything on, we'll start by pressing the power button twice and then holding for three seconds, just like we did with the mobile base station. So press twice, hold for three seconds. You'll hear it beep as well as you'll see the DJI logo appear on the screen. And I'll set that to aside for now so we can set up the drone. Pull this out of the case, and then you'll have two securing brackets here. So this is the gimbal holder. You want to remove that, and don't miss this. On the back, you have a foam holder here. And you want to make sure that those are on during travel because that holds all the gimbal um, and all the electronics in place, so it keeps everything nice and secure. But um, you want to make sure before you power anything on that those, those two are off. We'll grab a battery here, and you'll have two tabs, um, one that's larger, and that goes on top, and then the bottom one here. So put the large one on top and slide that into the back of the battery compartment, and it'll click in place. And same thing with the drone. We're going to go ahead and press twice and hold for three seconds. It'll take a couple seconds just to power on. Out of the box, this should connect with the remote controller right away. There is a procedure for connecting them manually if, you don't, if they don't um, automatically connect out of the box. All right, so once everything's powered on and connected, we'll go to the remote controller screen. Sometimes there's gonna be a firmware update required, and if you need assistance with that process, either updating the drone, the controller, the screen, the mobile station, we'll, we're creating a video um, in this series also to cover firmware updates, so check that out here as well. So go ahead and on the lower left hand corner you'll see plan and that's where we want to go first. This will give you four options. So you have 2D photogrammetry which is specifically for just uh, low level terrain, 3D photogrammetry which is for structures if you're doing actual 3D or the, if the terrain is very the elevation changes rapidly then I would use 3D. There's going to be a lot more images and data and a lot more uh, passes in terms of the grid plan that's used in the mission is going to be a lot more when you're using 3D than versus 2D. So if you're able to use 2D, um, a lot of surveyors have gotten very, very similar results just using 2D as long as the land um, and what they're surveying um, is just standard terrain versus an actual 3D object or structure. So that covers those two, and those, that's what we'll be using today is the 2D. And then you have waypoint flight and linear flight mission. For this video, we're just going to cover 2D photogrammetry. And now we're going to double check that we are connected to the RTK system. I actually don't think it's connected yet. We'll click on the upper right hand corner where you see the three dots. Second tab down will be RTK. And there's a lot to go over in the settings here, but primarily we're just establishing the connection with the RTK mobile base station. We want to make sure that RTK function is on, and then we're going to select our service type. So right underneath the uh, the on button for the RTK function, you'll see RTK service type, and click on DRTK mobile station. Once it connects, you'll see the aircraft's position here, 
as well as the position of the station. And that'll be live uh, GPS points here that we'll be looking at, as well as the amount of GPS satellites that each device is, is achieving and all the different, and how that's split up between the different options here. So just make sure that you have the words connection success right next to uh, the status there. And then we can exit out of that menu. Now all we need to do to plan a mission is select four points and it's gonna automatically de develop a uh, plan for you. So we'll just go ahead and click four points on the map. And once we select that fourth one, it automatically is gonna pull up the settings menu for that map. So we have everything from height, the speed, what happens when it finishes the, the mission. So in most cases, you wanna make sure that it, that's set at return to home. In terms of the height or the altitude, we found the most success when the altitude uh, for survey purposes is between 50 and 100 feet, depending on the elevation change of the, the site that you're working with. Speed, it'll tell you what the max speed is, and that's based on the altitude and, what, and making sure that the, the images are clear. Um, if, it, if it goes above that speed, sometimes you will, you will see either, um, not necessarily distortion, but you will see blur if the, if the speed is too high and the camera is not set up properly. So it'll tell you and give you an automatic max speed there and just, just stay with that um, as much as you can. Camera settings is below there, so we'll go ahead and click on that. Keep the defaults as they are. The only thing that you would need to change is the white balance. So for example, we have 3-2 as the photo ratio and the white balance is set as sunny right now, which is perfect for the conditions today. But if it was anything else, cloudy water or farmland, um, those have been uh, set up to optimize the results for those different environments. Gimbal angle, you'll see that's at 90. As long as you're in the 2D photogrammetry mode, it's gonna be set at 90 degrees. Um, so that, that means that the camera's pointed straight down. Definitely don't uh, change that if you're in 2D. If you're in 3D, the default will be, I think, about uh, 60 degrees. And so that's, that's built to make uh, different angles of the structure. It can get the more 3D data by using that angle. Then you have shutter priority and distortion correction. And what we've seen so far in the data that's been produced with the Phantom 4 RTK, uh, you wanna leave those off. So we'll click on save. Under that, advanced settings. And this is gonna be your overlaps. Uh, but for the most part, these standard overlaps are going to be around 70 or 80 percent, and uh, you'll want to keep those where they are as well. Again, click Save on the bottom. Go ahead and click Save. And this is going to allow you to name the mission. And the reason for this is you could actually replicate or redo uh, the mission as many times as you want, and it's going to save that uh, file to the drive here. And so you can actually name it here. We'll just call it Mission 1. Next, and then you can add notes to it as well. And so like I said, you could pull this up and add notes specific to that day or that time and do progress photos or progress maps to be able to track um, the different surveys that you're doing. And that'll save it to the system here. And we wanna make sure that we're set up on the ground here before we press uh, invoke. And invoke's gonna start the process of going through a checklist, making sure that the time of the mission matches the battery levels and that it has enough satellites and information to start the mission itself. So now we're going to put on the props for the, for the drone. So the silver ring will match with no dot on the motor. And you'll just press down and turn it about a quarter. All right, so all the props are on. Next we'll grab the uh, landing pad and then we're gonna take this out to a good takeoff point. So we wanna make sure that this doesn't move from its original position because it's already logged it's GPS, uh, but we're gonna take the landing pad and the drone out in the field over here and uh, get it to a nice open area where it can take off. And I'm curious to see how close the, uh, the drone will come back to its original takeoff position using this landing pad. All right, so set the landing pad down and put the drone in the middle. Another reason for using a landing pad is it gives you uh, the ability to make sure that there's no debris or any grass or anything that's hitting the camera system. So that's all set up. Go back to the controller here and uh, click invoke on the lower right hand corner. On the lower left hand corner, you'll also see the live view of the drone from what the camera is seeing here. So you can just double check that, make sure that you're in photo mode and that's gonna be that on the right hand side, you'll see a little uh, camera icon next to a video camera icon. Make sure that you have the camera mode um, instead of video. All right, we can go back to the map here. 
on the top bar, you have the mapping area in square feet, how much the area of the plan is covering. Uh, estimated flight time, in, uh, in this case, we just did a really small mission, so this is only about a minute and a half. How many photos it's gonna take, and that's gonna save to the SD card on the far right there. The last thing you wanna check is on the left-hand side by the DJI logo, there's your status menu. And just double check here, make sure everything is good. You have flight control, power, battery for both the RC and the aircraft, um, the, DJ, uh, the DRTK2 mobile station, and then the vision, which is your obstacle avoidance sensor. So those are properly calibrated. You can exit out of that menu, and now we're ready to fly. So go ahead and click start. There's a pop-up menu with precautions here. You can just scroll through that. Make sure that you're abiding by all the recommended settings. So when you click OK there, it'll upload the mission to the drone. And then the final self-check to make sure that the, the signal from the GPS is good and everything has been uploaded correctly. It's gonna warn you if there's anything wrong in the process here. So as soon as you're ready to fly, go ahead and slide that bar from left to right to execute. Start operation. And it'll take off. All right, so the mission has been completed. The aircraft is back to coming back to the home point originally. We're gonna see how accurate it is to the point. Like I said, I'm not controlling anything here. And this will be the accuracy of the RTK system. So it should come back, look at that, right to where it took off from. Pretty good. All right, so that's it for the first flight. Thanks so much for watching this video. In a uh, couple next videos, we'll be covering the post-processing using uh, stitching softwares like Drone Deploy. So thanks again for watching and uh, fly safe.